So Pharaoh was announced out of nowhere, was marketed briefly with inferior versions of two decade old and currently missing features, being brought back while being shamelessly presented as if they were brand new, and then launched without anticipation to record low player numbers. It came and went with a whimper, almost like it never happened. It already has less concurrent players than almost any other Total War game. Of all games since Rome 1 of 2004, only Troy, the game that launched on the Epic Game Store, and Thrones of Britannia, the most ignored Total War game ever, have less players. The two versions of Rome 1 have between them four or five times the number of players that Pharaoh has on a typical night. This is why they're fine with issuing partial refunds to not have to continue with their original plans for the game. Nobody bought it, so the refunds won't hurt them, and it means they don't have to spend money making DLCs that they already allowed people to pay for on the promise of eventually being made. They expect to make a loss on DLCs, which is why they're doing another Three Kingdoms, but even earlier, and taking the minuscule hit of refunding the five people that bought the game in order to get out of having to follow through and turning Pharaoh into a DLC pipeline, a mini DLC pipeline all on its own. You know things are bad when DLC, the blades for the Razor and Blades model, the ink for the printer, isn't profitable. The base game is supposed to be the loss leader, but the DLC is supposed to print money, and it is so clear to them it won't do it, that they will issue refunds and kill the project, all while pretending to be doing you a favour. This is how you know their apology was worthless. They'll piss on you and tell you it's raining. They're still doing it. So the year of Pharaoh is, among other things, a Total War winter, a dead zone. With Total War being an annualised franchise like FIFA or Assassin's Creed, Total War is having an unintended empty year, but that doesn't mix with YouTube where the algorithm expects near daily videos and where sponsorship deals need constant fodder, so people have to come up with something. The content mill has to keep churning, the mass production, the industrialization of content has to continue, and the great shilling operation has to keep going even without the backing of CA behind it. So what do we do? Oh, we upload empty speculation videos. Because as we all know, if my game company just makes the right game, then everything will be better. Great, even. That's right. Creative Assembly has just not made the right game yet. They just keep making the wrong game. If they make the right game, as in they don't get the title of the game wrong, the game will be good. That's why Pharaoh is shit. They just didn't know how to spell it. If Sophia called their game Medieval 3 instead of Pharaoh and slapped a Medieval theme over it, it would have been way better. Obviously. It's like for every hour someone like me spends snapping people back to reality with leaks and testimonies from concerned Creative Assembly employees explaining the actual systemic and procedural problems at the company that are impeding the games and blocking real ambition. For every hour we put into bringing people back down and grounding them in reality so they don't get ripped off or feel scammed, we get a hundred hours or a thousand hours of slop in the other direction, instilling people with baseless hope and hype for things that not only don't exist, and not only aren't eventually going to exist, but are explicitly confirmed to be both unplanned and impossible. Because not only are the games not in the pipeline, but there are good reasons to think that even if they were, they won't resemble what people are clearly willing to pretend they will be. False expectations on top of false expectations. This isn't just shilling, it's outright snake oil salesmanship. And judging from previous statements from Creative Assembly themselves, it looks like the company itself has a policy of maintaining this airy, elusive possibility. It makes people believe in the company, and in the tertiary games they are going to be putting out. If the company appears to be confident in its ability to eventually rise to the anticipated challenge, it's having hope and hope, belief and belief. So we need to keep buying all these other games so they'll make this one I actually want. Absolute sucker mentality. So this is about Medieval 3 and to an extent, Empire 2, because those are the two grand-scale, ambitious settings that ignite people's imaginations. Nobody asks for a Rome 3, and we all know why. We had Empire 1 from 2009, which was arguably the most ambitious, if not botched, Total War game ever. Medieval 2 to Empire was a massive jump, a whole new engine that's been chugging along ever since. It introduced naval battles, it introduced proper line infantry and real artillery, it spanned most of the globe, from India to Europe to the Americas, a massive game that commands an ambitious sequel. If people are missing ambition, they probably want an Empire 2 to get stuck into. And of course, the big one of Medieval 3, because even more than ambition, people want to see substance. Medieval 2 was nearly 18 years ago and has retained thousands of concurrent players to this day. An absolutely solid game, there's no denying it. And then there's the mods. The Third Age mod is Lord of the Rings Total War to this day. 
<sighs> it's really sad. I spent more time playing that than probably any other game up until that point. I trained myself to destroy stacks outnumbering me 10 to 1 with that mod. Just a solid game. So if what people are after is a solid game, they want a Medieval 3, and that's not happening. Neither of these are coming. At least if I go by everything I've been told. Here's the most concrete thing I heard about this from a current or former CA employee. This came from someone that gave me good information in regards to other things, so I have plenty of reasons to believe this at this point. I'd put money on it. Here it is in its entirety with regards to the current state of Total War in general. Overall, there was a lack of forward planning at CA, chasing after short-term profits with an incredibly packed and brutal release window with no chance to put together a unified engine and work on fixing the many issues that have been plaguing Total War for years. And of course, we heard that corroborated extensively from other leaks I've had in the past. The game industry has changed dramatically from before, during and now after Covid. CA has been slow to adapt, especially in regards to pay. CA underpays compared to other companies and industry. It would be normal for colleagues leaving CA and moving to another company to get a 50% pay increase to take them up to the competitive salary for the industry. And I've also heard this over and over again. And you can see this kind of thing on Glassdoor, I think, as well, if I remember right. But it's so common. It's such a recurring theme. People will be complaining, or it'll even just come up in passing, where they'll say... I've moved on and I'm at this other company and, by the way, I'm now earning twice as much money. <laughs> and it's not even twice as much money to do twice as much work, it's just doing basically the same thing they were before and they're getting paid way more to do it. So yeah, this is all basically confirmed so far. And then alongside with this, I heard a side note. I know many people are asking for it, but Empire 2 and Medieval 3 are not in the current content pipeline which spans many years. So don't expect those games in this, or even the next decade. It's doubtful that this will change as well because of the IPs they are working with. And there you go. The hopes and dreams of thousands killed dead. At least if you believe this. And at least assuming Sega hasn't came in with a sledgehammer and totally changed everything. That's the only hope. So this tells you everything you need to know. The final line especially is telling. They're not interested, they have other things going on, and it's no surprise. They sold out the franchise to Warhammer, and those people buy up anything. They literally beg for DLC on the company subreddit. Can you imagine those people that bought Medieval 2 in 2006 spending $25 a pop on DLCs? $25 for a Holy Roman Empire DLC to make the faction playable? Give me a fucking break. Can you see them paying $15 for a unit pack that has Greek fire throwers and cataphracts? I can't. I'm one of those people from that era, and I'd refuse to spend that money out of principle and have been this entire time. If Medieval 3 launched with a Papal States DLC pre-order incentive, not only would my hopes for the game being good immediately go through the floor, but I'd be shitting on it all the way up to launch and long afterwards. Do you know who wouldn't object to the exact same practices? Brand worshipper fanboys. They'd watch the high budget trailer and celebrate it as good news that their faction was actually going to make it into the game on launch, and the brown nose and shells would be along for the ride, obviously. We all know that by now, we've seen it. So that's clearly the way forward if you want money. Get more of these desperate fanboys hooked and milk them. They don't care if the game doesn't have naval battles, they don't even know what those are, they've never played any of the previous games that had them, not one. They don't care if there's no Avatar Conquest multiplayer mode, they've never heard of it and don't care about finding out what it was, they're just happy someone out there is depicting their setting, and that's what I've been told about Warhammer several times now. These people are literally just happy to see a game that is an absolute dog shit that lets them play out their setting. I've been told they spent years being traumatised by a carousel of atrociously shit Warhammer games until Total War applied its formula to their setting. The standards these people have are rock bottom, so that's obviously the way to go. More IPs, get more of these desperate suckers. The IPs comment also aligns perfectly with what the head of the studio said in the leaked email about Rob being fired, where he said, Our relationships with our IP partners are not affected. CA is working with IPs. It isn't public yet what these IPs are, but just recently we had it confirmed from Sega that Creative Assembly is focusing on Total War, with the console team ostensibly just being disbanded. So Creative Assembly has been gutted by up to 42%, with the most aggressive cutting happening to the non-Total War projects. So a plain reading of the confirmed facts 
would say that creep assembly is focusing on total war and that emphasis comes in the guise of projects that are hedged by their utilization of other brands total war isn't striking out on its own with a total war formula standing strong while depicting gritty epic rich periods in history like it used to and like everyone is asking for quite the opposite it looks far more like it's doing what hyenas was crudely attempting incest mixing total war with other franchises just more frankensteins to get as much money as possible from established fan bases via crossover with the unique and incredible total war formula and if we know how companies operate we know that they're not going to accept something less or even on the same scale as warhammer fantasy the line has to go up higher and higher and the market demands at seven percent year on year and they're further incentivized to avoid another Warhammer fantasy with how they've recently been liquidating any existing goodwill and trust into cold hard cash with massively priced up DLCs. They're doing what I said in my Absolute State video from 2020, slash and burn. The slash and burn has finally come for the Warhammeroid plastic collectors. That's what these past few months have been. I warned about it years ago. But of course, leave Warhammer out of this please. Sure. And now you get replaced by someone else, pumped and dumped, someone even more willing than you where to fork out the $25 can always be found, you reap what you sow. And on the subject of naval battles, it's one of the most prominent examples of feature cutting, and I was told this, they 100% have zero interest in pursuing naval combat, I'd hazard a guess if they were to do it, it'd end up being more of the same trend we saw with Warhammer where it's all resolved. I distinctly remember a bitter hatred towards the development of naval combat. They have statistics they rely on to infer design decisions, one of which was how few naval battles were ever actually played, but I always argued it was a chicken or the egg situation whereby of course people don't play many naval battles in say Rome 2 because it wasn't designed well enough to invest time to make it fun. The last time naval combat was any good was Shogun 2 Fall of the Samurai, which I would add is coming up for 12 years ago. But even then, it was a shallow resemblance to what Empire had, which, of course, was the first attempt. After years of lying that involved offering fake reasons as excuses, which includes Troy not having enough documentation on sea combat, and Warhammer 1 having no oceans, after all that, a developer admitted, divulged at an event, that they don't add naval battles to Warhammer 2 for its massive ocean, because it costs resources that they don't have, that's obviously also why they removed them in the first place and haven't been putting them in this entire time. They decided it can't justify its cost. The problem here is that a Medieval 3 and especially an Empire 2 would be an absolutely embarrassing value proposition if it didn't bother with naval battles. Not just that, but they would have to be good or they would ruin the game. Greek fire throwers in the Mediterranean in the Middle Ages, Caracks and Galleons sailing to the Americas through storms to conquer the New World. If these games didn't have all of this, it would be pathetic. So rather than confront this dilemma, they can easily just not make the games and do something else. Another big reason to never attempt these sorts of games again, and one that will always be there, a permanent deterrent. I was also told that there was a split at the company with some developers really wanting to make an Empire 2 set in the Caribbean, and that this died in the concept stage. I was also told a World War 1 Total War game was being worked on as recently as a few years ago and is likely similarly scrapped at this point. So all of you fans out there asking for these ambitious historical settings that push the envelope and actually progress the Total War formula past where it was a decade ago. This is how far your enthusiasm spurred them. Concept stage and then scrapped. So your dreams are falling extremely short of being realised and have been for absolutely years now. I should also add that from other conversations I had with current and former CA, the sentiment that the fans want a Medieval 3 or an Empire 2 is widely understood and acknowledged by people in the company. I heard these frustrations directly from some of them. There seemed to be frustration and exasperation at the direction Total War is taken instead, and this might be one of the big factors behind the motivation to leak. Exasperation and frustration at the constant pursuit of branded deals instead of sticking to the Total War formula they fell in love with and they made them want to work at the company in the first place years ago. This isn't to say Total War won't be doing more non-branded games like Warhammer, it just means that they won't be the focus anymore, they don't make enough money, so they won't have as much money put towards them if they are ever actually attempted, and you saw the results of that with Pharaoh already, 
a game that clearly made some efforts to appeal to the actual Total War fanbase with getting rid of noxious single entities and reintroducing old features that were gutted years ago. Gutted in order to make the main project, Warhammer, more appealing to the casual players that have never played a Total War game before in their lives, just like the people in high positions at CA, like the Vice President. But these attempts are too little, too late, and this is what people mean when they ask for a Medieval 3. Make a game that was built from the ground up to not have single entities. Make a game that was designed with these classic features being core to the whole experience, and not just added in as a pure market gimmick while being vastly inferior to what we had literally two decades ago. That's what people mean by Medieval 3 or an Empire 2, an ambitious game with depth and where player intention can be enacted with all of the interacting systems and their rich possibilities. Nobody wanted to play Troy. People like me and Pixelated Apollo immediately called it out for what it was before it even launched. And do you know what even less than nobody wanted? To play Troy 2 with Pharaoh, which is why it's the most undersold Total War game by a massive margin. So there you have it. No Medieval 3, no Empire 2, confirmed. Come back in a year, two years, five years and tell me if I'm wrong. Or even better, go back to videos uploaded a year ago or two years ago or five years ago and see if I've been wrong yet. Cheers everyone and thanks for watching. Don't shoot the messenger. If you like my work and want to support it, I have a Patreon page. I give out perks every month, which includes updates on what I'm thinking and what I'm planning. Special thanks to Matteo Olivetti, Nerdington Paints, SJ Mage and Bader Nasser.